Hello, and welcome to this part of the FAST tutorial series. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to perform segmentations on imaging data sets. So in today's video, similar to what we were looking at last time, uh, we're going to be using this data set here. This is uh, an imaging data set of Pseudomonas aeruginosa moving around at the interface between agar and glass. And as you can see, as we increase time, we have a combination of cell division an active twitching motility causing these cells to move around within the field of view. We also have, um, as well as this bright field channel, we have a YFP channel, and YFP in this case is expressed under a uh, cyclic AMP sensitive promoter. And what we're interested in doing is figuring out exactly how the levels of cyclic AMP marked by this YFP, uh, how those relate to the amount of movement of individuals within this data set. So in order to make that uh, relationship clear, we first need to figure out exactly how cells are moving within this data set. And to do that, we need to track cells. And to do that, we first need to detect where our cells are within the image at each time point. So to do that within FAST, we use this segmentation GUI here. Uh, to open it up, once we've performed the data import, we just click this green segmentation button. That brings up the segmentation GUI. Now, this is split up into two separate sections. First of all, we have our initial setup. This just tells us what images we want to segment and the kind of general appearance of those images. Uh, so we'll perform that setup initially. Firstly, we have the segmentation channel drop down menu. This allows us to choose which channel we want to perform the segmentations on. So we can choose either channel 1, which is our bright field in this case, or channel 2, which is our YFP channel. We're going to be segmenting the bright field channel, but obviously, depending on your data set, you may want to perform segmentations on other channels as well. Uh, we can also choose the foreground color. So this is the color of the objects relative to the background. In this case, we have black objects on a back, on a white background, or at least darker gray objects on a lighter gray background. And that's just important for deciding, for example, during the ridge detection, should we de be detecting ridges that are brighter than the objects in this case, or should we be detecting ridges that are darker than the objects, which would be if we chose the opposite foreground color. So in this case, we have dark objects on a light background. So we're just going to click the black foreground color radio button. We can also choose different times within our data set uh, in order to perform our parameter optimization. I'm going to choose a fairly arbitrary time point in the middle of the data set. And then we can verify that the parameters still work for other time points later as well. OK, so that's set up um, our pre parameter choice uh, window. In order to perform our parameter selection, uh, FAST allows you to go through each stage of the segmentation process individually. So we have four basic stages of the segmentation process. We have texture detection, that is um, corresponding to these two parameters here. We have ridge detection, corresponding to these three parameters here. We have a watershed stage here, and then we choose objects in the final segmentation based on their size. So objects that are too large or too small get excluded from the final segmentation. And in order to optimize each of these four different stages, we have four different overlays which allow us to see exactly what these steps in the segmentation process are doing and how the segmentation parameters are working. So to start with, we're going to use the texture overlay. This is the first stage of the segmentation algorithm and is the one that automatically appears when you open up the GUI. Texture detection works by drawing a window of a size determined by this neighborhood size parameter here and measuring a texture metric within that window. Um, and if that metric is above a value set by this texture threshold, that corresponding pixel is set as part of the foreground and if it is below that threshold, it is set as part of the background. So um, to start with, we'll just increase this neighborhood size. It's usually good to set this to be about the width of a single cell. 
um, which in this case is 21 pixels. And then we can set this texture threshold. Um, so as we increase that, you can see that we decrease the amount of the image that is detected as part of the foreground. And if we decrease that, you can see that we get um, over segmentation of these objects. So we'll just set that to be 1.7. And we want to set this so that we get an approximate se separation of the foreground from the background, but we don't worry at this point about separating individual objects. To do that stage, we need to move on to the next part of the algorithm, the ridge detection algorithm. So to do that, we just click the ridges overlay type in this drop down menu. And you can see that we move to uh, a different part of the GUI where we can change these three parameters here. So a ridge is a portion of the image where we go from, in this case, a dark region to a light region and back to a dark region. This ridge scale parameter sets the width of that um, ridge that we are de uh, detecting. Uh, so larger values tend to produce wider ridges and they tend to be smoother as well. This ridge threshold, similarly to the texture threshold, allows us to set how much of the image is composed of these detected ridges so we decrease that to increase the size of the detected ridges and then this minimum ridge area allows us to discount small ridges so if I decrease this to say 10 you can see that we now have these small ridges appearing uh, associated with these small speckles of noise within the image so since we're not interested in those I'll just increase this back up to 100 which will allow us to remove these small pieces of debris from the final analysis. And if you want to check um, just how good the ridge detection algorithm is doing uh, in some detail, you can use these tools in the top left hand corner. These allow you to zoom in uh, on particular portions of the image and also pan around and look at uh, different regions. You can also change the time as well, of course. OK, so I'm quite happy with those parameters um, for the ridge detection move on to the next stage which is the watershed um, this will allow us to break these portions here where you can see that we have these two objects which clearly should be separate but the ridge detection is quite fully separating them so when we move to the watershed you can see that we now have these yellow outlines which indicate um, where the combination of the t texture detection and the ridge detection uh, algorithms have demarcated the boundary of the object and you have these red lines which indicate where the watershed is separating these objects. So you can see here, for example, that this is currently over segmenting our image. So I will increase this parameter here to 2.5 and hopefully that should get rid of these excessively wide um, segmentations. Okay, so as I say, we can pan around and just check that this is working for the entire image, which it does seem to be. Um, so we can finally move to the segmentation overlay. In this overlay, each object is coloured in a different colour. Um, and we can set these two parameters here. So these parameters allow us to remove objects that are too small or too large. In this case, you can see that we're including these regions of background um, but these are generally smaller than the cells in terms of area. So I'll just increase this low object area threshold to 400. And that will remove those regions. Um, so let's just zoom out again and check that the entire image uh, is being segmented properly. That does seem to be the case. Um, we can also zoom to other time points, so just check that this is working at all points in the data set. Uh, and that again does seem to be the case, so you can see that these segmentations are quite clean even at other time points. So if we're happy with these parameters that we've chosen, we can now press process them all. And that will bring up this loading bar, which will indicate that we are processing the entire data set. And that's being loaded into um, a folder in our root directory called segmentations. Um, and this will be used as the basis of our feature detection, which is the next stage of the uh, fast pipeline. So I'll see you there in the next video.